In the field of embryology, there were a group of students who collected all the data that they could find in the Quran, as well as the Hadith, dealing with embryology. And they followed the verse of the Quran, Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse 43, and Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 7, which says, First, Alu Ahal Zikri in Kuntum La Talamu. If you don't know, if you are in doubt, ask the person who's knowledgeable. So these Arab students, they collected the verses of the Quran and the Hadith dealing with embryology and translated into English and presented it to Prophet Keith Moore, that was about 30 years back, in the late 70s. And Prophet Keith Moore at that time was one of the highest authorities in the field of embryology. And he was the head of the Department of Anatomy in the University of Toronto in Canada. When he went through all the translation verses of the Quran and the Hadith, he said that most of the verses of the Quran, which speak about embryology, are in perfect conformity with latest advances of embryology. But there are a couple of verses which I cannot say that they are right. Neither can I say they are wrong because I myself don't know about it. And two such verses were the first two verses of the Quran to be revealed of Surah Iqra or Surah Alaq, chapter 96, verse number one and two, which says, Iqra bismi rabbika allazi khalaq. Khalaq al insana min alaq. Read, recite, proclaim in the name of thy Lord who has created. Who has created the human beings from something which clings a leech-like substance. So Prophet Keith Moore said, I don't know whether the human beings, the embryo, embryology means it's the study of the development of the human being, the early stages of human being in the womb of the mother, for those who don't know. He said that I do not know whether the initial stages of the embryo, that's the initial stages of human being, it looks like a leech or not. So he went in his laboratory and under a very powerful microscope observed the early stages of the embryo and compared it with the photograph of a leech. And he was astonished at the striking resemblance. And later, when 80 questions were asked to him regarding embryology in the Quran and the Hadith, he said that if you had asked me these questions 30 years ago, that means from today more than 60 years back, I would not be able to answer more than 50% because embryology is a new branch of medicine which I developed recently. And whatever additional information he got, he included in the new edition of his book, The Developing Human. The Developing Human is one of the books referred by most of the students throughout the world in the first year of MBBS, first year of medical college. And even I, when I was in the first year of the medical college, in Bombay, if we had to get just pass marks, we used to refer to the book written by Inderbir Singh. If you wanted to score in embryology, we had to refer to the developing human by Professor Keith Moore. So Professor Keith Moore, he incorporated this new information he got from the Quran and the Hadith into the third edition of his book, The Developing Human, which got the award for the best medical book written by a single author. And later on, this book was translated into several languages of the world. And Professor Keith Moore said that this information in the Quran cannot come from human source. The author of this Quran has to be Almighty God. And he said that he has no objection in agreeing that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the messenger of this God. Imagine Prophet Keith Moore being a Christian said that. Quran says in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 5 to 7, that does not man know from what is created? He is created from a drop coming forth from a space between the backbone and the ribs. What does the Quran mean by saying the human beings have been created from a drop coming from a space between the backbone and the ribs? Today, after science has advanced, we have come to know that the genital organs in the human beings in the embryonic age, when the child is in the womb of the mother, it developed from a space close to the kidney. That is the space between the spinal column and the 11th and 12th rib. In the male, the genital organ, the male gonads are the testes. 
in the females, the female gonads, they are the ovaries. And later on, in the embryonic age, these genital organs, the gonads, they descend. In the female, the ovary descends till the true pelvis. And in the male, via the inguinal canal, it descends to the scrotum. But even after descending in the adult life, yet these genital organs, they receive the nerve supply from the same space between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib. And the blood supply from the aorta, which is present in the same space between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib. And the venous return and the lymphatic drainage goes to the same space, the space between the backbone and the 11th and 12th rib. The Quran mentions in no less than 11 different places that the human beings have been created from a nutfa. It's also mentioned in Surah Hajj, chapter 22, verse number 5, and Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 13, that the human beings have been created from nutfa, which means a minute quantity of liquid. What does the Quran mean that we have created the human beings from a minute quantity of liquid? The Quran also says in Surah Sajda, chapter number 32, verse number 8, that we have created the human being from a quintessence. And we have created the human beings from solala. The Arabic word solala, besides meaning quintessence, it also means the best part of the whole. So besides the Quran saying we have created the human being from minute quantity of liquid, it also says we have created the human being from the best part of the whole. And today science tells us that only one spermatozoa out of the millions of sperms that are emitted is sufficient to fertilize the ovum. Only one out of several millions. So this one out of several millions the Quran refers as nutfa minute quantity and solala, the best part of the whole, one out of several millions. The Quran further says in Surah Insan, chapter 76, verse number two, we have created the human being from nutfa and amshaj, from a minute quantity of mingled fluids. Today's sign says that both the male fluid and the female fluid, both are responsible for the birth of the baby. So minute quantity of mingled fluids. And besides the male and the female fluids, even the surrounding fluid takes part, prostatic fluid, etc. The Quran says in Surah Az-Zumur, chapter 39, verse number 6, that we have made the human beings in stages, one after the other, in three waves of darkness. According to Professor Keith Moore, he said that this verse of the Quran, when it mentions the three waves of darkness, it refers to the anterior abdominal wall, the uterine wall, and the amniocorionic membrane. That the human being is made into stages in three waves of darkness. The Quran describes the various embryological stages in great detail. The Quran mentions in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14, that we have created the human beings from a quintessence of clay, then made it into a nutfa, a minute quantity of liquid, then made the nutfa into alaka, a leech-like substance, then made the alaka into mudga, that's a chewed-like lump, then made the mudga into ezama, bones, then clothed the bones with lahem, that is flesh, and then we made a different creature. Glory be to Allah, who's the best to create. These three verses of the Quran describe the various embryological stages, the initial stages of development of a human being in the mother's womb in great detail. First it says that it made it from a nutfa which we discussed, a minute quantity of liquid. Then made the nutfa into alaka. That means a leech-like substance, which we discussed earlier. The meaning of the Arabic word alaka, it has got three meanings. One is a leech-like substance. It also means something which clings. And the third meaning of alaka is congealed clot of blood. Besides it looking like a leech, the embryo in the initial stages, it also behaves like a leech. It behaves like a blood sucker. It derives its nutrition from the mother 
through the placenta. It behaves like a blood sucker. So besides looking like a leech, it also behaves like a leech. The second meaning, something which clings, we know that the embryo clings to the uterine wall. Throughout the nine months that the fetus is in the womb of the mother, it clings to the uterine wall. The third meaning of alaka is congealed clot of blood. And today's science tells us that in the initial stages, the blood does not circulate. And the blood clots in the vessels and it appears like a congealed clot of blood. So all three meanings of alaka, alhamdulillah, today's science says, is in perfect conformity to latest advances made in embryology. It further says we placed it in a karar makin, a place of security. And we know today that the fetus is protected posteriorly by the spinal column, by the backbone, as well as the posterior muscles. And anteriorly, it is protected by the anterior abdominal wall, by the amniocardionic membrane, as well as the amniotic fluid, which protects the child. So the science today testifies that the child is well protected in the womb of the mother. It further says we made the alaka into a mudga. A mudga means a chewed like lump. So Professor Keith Moore took a plaster seal and made it look into a leech like substance, initial stage of embryo, and then placed it between his teeth. He bit it to make it appear like a mudga, a chewed like lump. And when he saw it, the teeth marks, it resembled the somites from where the nerves develop. And the Quran continues, we made the mudga into izama bones, then clothed the bones with lahem, that is flesh. Then we made it altogether a different creature. So what does the Quran mean that we made it into altogether a different creature? Till this stage of mudga, izama, lahem, chewed like lamb, bones, flesh, till this stage, today science tells us, the initial stages of development of a human being is similar to the development of a fish, rabbit, and many other animals. Only after this stage does the human development differ in looks, where we have a head, then we have limbs, then the Quran says, we made it into a different creature. Glory be to Allah, who is the best to create. Imagine, the Quran describes the various embryological stages in great detail. And Prophet Keith Moore, he said, that this description given in the Quran, based on shapes, alaka, leech-like substance, mudga, chewed like lamb, izama, bones, laham, flesh, is far superior to the divisions made in modern embryology, where we say stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. It's difficult to identify. The description given in the Quran is far more superior and much more easy. And previously, the scientists, they thought, it was in the 16th and 17th century, when scientists like Swamadam, they thought that the sperm contained the miniature human being. The head of the sperm contained the miniature human being, and then it grew in the womb of the mother. Later on, when they came to know that the size of the ovum is bigger than the sperm, D. Graffe, he said that the human being is present in the ovum and not the sperm. Later on in 18th century, Mao Paratis, he propounded the biparental theory that both the ovum and the sperm is responsible for the creation of the human being. They fertilize, they form the zygote, which the Quran has described in great detail. Furthermore, the Quran says in Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 5, that we have created the human beings from a minute quantity of clay, made into alaka, made the alaka into mudga, partly formed and partly unformed. This verse of the Quran was taken to Dr. Marshall Johnson, who is the head of the Department of Anatomy in Daniel Institute, in Sir Thomas Jefferson University in USA, in Philadelphia. Now we have come to know in science that if at this stage we cut the embryo and we analyze the organs, we find some of the organs are formed, some are not formed. So Professor Marshall Johnson said, if we describe this stage of the embryo as a complete creation, it will be wrong because some organs are not formed. If we label it as an incomplete creation, that's also wrong because some of the organs are formed. So there's no better description than the description mentioned in the Quran, partly formed and partly unformed. 
in Arabic, it can also be treated as differentiated and undifferentiated. And Prof. Marshall Johnson said that at this stage, some cells are differentiated, some are undifferentiated. Further is mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Sajda, chapter number 32, verse number 9, that we have given the human beings the faculty of hearing and sight. It's mentioned in Surah Insan, chapter number 76, verse number 2. We have given to the human being the gift of hearing, sight, and feeling. So the Quran first speaks about hearing, then it speaks about sight. And today's science tells us the first sense to develop in a human being is the sense of hearing. By the 22nd day, the year starts to formulate. And by the fifth month of pregnancy, it is completed. And later on, the eye splits open. That's in the seventh month of pregnancy. So the Quran is perfect in conformity with science. First come the sense of hearing, then come the sense of sight. There was an experiment done where a baby whose mother was a typist, a newborn baby was taken, and the mother of that baby was a typist, and that baby born to a typist was placed along with other nine babies who were born to normal mothers who were not typists. And the typewriter was sounded. All the babies were scared except the baby of the typist. Because the baby of the typist was used to hearing the typewriter in the womb of the mother. So the baby was used to it, so he wasn't scared. You know, there are many hadiths which say that the pregnant woman should read the Quran. Today, science has confirmed that when the mother is pregnant, when the lady is pregnant, what she sees, what she hears, what she listens, has an impact on the child.